Hello YouTube, Matt here from the Blue Bell Model Railway Channel and Flexus 3D Models as well. Uh, you can see I have a, a small gathering of odd prototypes which were never built, never made and probably never ran. Um, you can see I've now added another one to the collection um, but I'll go through them if you haven't seen my other videos on this channel regarding these never was a prototypes or never built prototypes uh, so at the back left we have the uh, schools now there's a few photos on uh, Google or Google search um, this is the schools which was clad in plywood uh, which was the style of the time making it streamlined and making it look air smoothed or that kind of thing it never did actually run um, but it was a, an odd prototype and it yeah it was just a PR exercise as always on the right back side is uh, my version of a merchant navy now there are various drawings about this uh, locomotive uh, from uh, 482 which this one is to 282 to them being told bullied this is that it was too big so he needed to make it smaller um, therefore we now have the specific wheel arrangement of the 462 uh, merchant navies which then became as we know now um, then in front of that just one ahead we have the as I dub it the Q1 Pacific um, now this could have been there's a little bit of unknown about it so we don't know if it was um, sort of a light Pacific version obviously sort of designed in the austerity times um, judging by the casing and there is a wooden model of this particular one at the National Railway Museum if you go into the stores of where they keep all the models and and memorabilia of that kind of thing it's sort of tucked away in the sort of left side as you come through the, come through the door um, but this could have been a light Pacific it could have been a Merchant Navy we are not quite sure there's a strange timeline of it but this got as far as a wooden mock-up as it were a small model of it but never progressed any further um, it's an odd looking thing but it is quite striking when it's running and you can see it and then that brings me on to the next one which is at the front and I'll get a bit closer so you can have a look all right so for Q1 tank engine as I just said it, it uses a general um, Hornby Q1 chassis uh, with no tender so again there's not really much modification to do on this apart from removing pipe work um, which is in the way um, I've still got the lubricator on this one which is a, a BR later version so I've removed the smoke box number etc which you can do with some care and some sandpaper and a bit of time um, so generally what's 3D printed on this from my point are the tanks and the bunker that's the only thing which is printed on this it's been detailed with some detailed parts from RT models so uh, go and check those out I'll, I've actually written this up as far as I can so far um, so you know where to buy the bits from the bogey is a standard uh, southern designed bogey the wheels are bullied uh, bogey wheels from uh, uh, I think it's either markets or I mean you can get some from uh, Alan Gibson as well which of a standard size I think it's three foot six I think they are uh, you can buy bigger ones uh, like the tender ones um, but these look about right I did think about putting some bigger wheels on it but the drawing sort of said these are the size of the pokey wheels on this one so that's what I've gone with the design that I've gone with originally I did look at the chap who built the um, live steam version if I turn this around just so you can see a little bit better so on here on his I should say and on the drawing it kind of looks like an Ivert tender or not tender sorry a bunker um, or you could sort of look at it and say well it's, if it was built in Brighton it could have been a sort of standard four and that got carried over to the standard fours of today so basically it slopes away and this probably shouldn't be here i mean the q1s did have some visibility issues running rearwards 
And I don't think my idea of having two tunnels is probably the best idea in the world, but what I was trying to do was incorporate some of the uh, Q1 tender features, and you can see this behind on uh, the Q1 Pacific I've got just here. You can see the, the tunnels going down and the slider just here, which I've also got on here. Now the other thing what I looked at and said, well, how would you put the water in it? I mean, the guy who built his live steam version basically had a, a tank filler on the top. I thought, well, the Q1 on the tender has the filler caps just on the inside here. So if this pulls back today, which it will, I can turn that around. Hopefully, if it's bright enough, you can see there's a filler cap just there on both sides to fill up the tanks. And then there's a pipe running from the back of the tender all the way up to the tank. I keep saying tender, it's bunker, my apologies. Um, and um, that's just basically to increase the water capacity, etc. Now you probably noticed in the sunlight there that I've put rivets all over the tank there. Now, I was having a discussion with someone at uh, the Isle of Wight model exhibition, which happened a couple of weeks ago where uh that's at haven street by the way it's a new event so, so look out for the next year's one it was pretty good um and there's a video on this channel so if you look back you can probably find it um we were discussing possibly we don't think they were riveted so what i'm going to do is i'll offer two choices a riveted tank or a welded tank so there aren't any rivets on that one basically or you could say flush riveted whatever you want to say um so there's two of those obviously on each side, or one on each side, I should say. Uh, the number, I spoke to a bullied expert, so uh, the number is correct. So what I've done is 2C, which is two rear axles, and the C representing the six. And the number 21, that was the date I actually bought the Q1 on uh, at the uh, branch line event. So there you go, that's why it's that number. But other than that, it is not modified in any way. So this will just basically glue onto the back of the cab on the underside. Now you can see the bogey here. I bought this from um, Wizard Models. Again, the part number is on the right up um, and various springs that I put in there. And I've, again, I've modified bits and pieces just to give it a little bit more um, bounce and also a little bit more stability. It's not moving around, is it? as it was when I first put it together so it, it runs pretty well um, and as I say all this has pickups as well on the bogey reusing the cables which come down to get the power from the tender so that's just been reused uh, this has all been painted or repainted with uh, Halford satin black and then I've picked out some matte areas like the roof and the uh, smoke box as well on the rear, as I say, the, the actual buffers were from markets and it was just rattling around in my spares box. Uh, so these are quite simple to put straight on. You can get cast ones from RT models as well. Um, you can see there's an EM pocket on the bogey. Again, I got that from, uh, oh, I can't remember their name now. Somebody who does castings, can't remember, gone off the top of my head. But again, it's in, it's on the right up so that's all there i've added a handrail lamp irons as well as steps up to the top and moving around all i've done is refitted the pipework in a sort of natural position where it used to be um, transfers are from hmrs press fix so they're quite easy to get hold of and they look very nice all the steps on this are uh, from rt models I'm going to replace the ones on the front as well because they're a little bit delicate. Um, but overall, that's how it looks. That's what it is. It runs well. It performs well. And it's quite a weighty little thing because of the amount of resin that's in the tanks and and on the bunker as well. So it's quite nicely balanced and weighted. Um, it's another ugly thing, of course. But um, hopefully um, people will see this and go, that's different. I'd like one of those or I want something different. So, as I say, most of this will be available 
uh, after I've done a few little modifications. Um, I'm in quite a big project at the moment trying to redo the Metropolitan carriages and make them available as well, which is about 50% complete. Uh, I just need to do the chassis floors, done the bogies already, so and the seating, which is the only thing I've got left to do. So if you're interested, drop me a message. Um, find my page on Facebook, uh, Vectis 3D Models, and drop me an email or a message, and uh, we can talk. And uh, of course, they're available for a price, and because they're quite bespoke, and they're one-offs, and I don't get a lot of demand for it. It's still, you know, the price is reasonable, but it's still quite high, really, because of the amount of resident users and because they're so big, especially the Q1, uh, Q1 Pacific, it, it's quite a job to do. Um, but any questions, please feel free to ask and we'll go through it. Um, this video was just to sort of show the differences and the new things that I've been working on. And this one was a month project, which was pretty quick for me, really. Um, and overall, I, I quite like it. It's, it's different. It looks weird. But then again... Anything from that bullied era probably does, but uh, I'm sure it probably would have worked if he decided to go through with it, uh, which it never was. So um, thanks for watching and uh, see you again in the next video, wherever that may possibly be. Uh, catch you soon.